in um, the decision at second five, you just talk about why Geordie's won the race there over David this week? Ah, we're just going with combinations from that uh, Eden Park test. Um, said at the time, you know, Geordie winning and, and I, I thought it had an outstanding game. So it's a chance to give him another start in that position in a different environment against a different team. So just, you know, I guess it's a bit about gathering information for the future, but also pretty excited about, uh, you know, what, what he brings and, and also the ability, I guess, to use Davy off the bench and, and utilise Geordie maybe in a different role later in the game. What were those things that you saw from him in his first test start at 12? Oh, look, I think those who watched, he was just physical, he was direct, he's a good communicator, and, you know, I think we're in a, we're in a nice spot because, uh, you know, we're really impressed with the way Davy grew through the, through the rugby championship, then took a bit of a ding, it gave it an opportunity for Geordie to go in there, and... This is a chance just for us, I guess, to cement his his understanding of that role in our team. And going forward, I think it just, like I said, it just gives us a different style and a, and a different game. Does it feel important to start the Northern Tour of Europe League with a statement performance? I'd love to do that. It's um, we started it last week, I guess. So that was this is game two, but um, you know, it's it's. It's a it's a stadium that we love playing in, and nothing better, you know, in, in our mindset to go out there and against a very passionate team to actually go and play really, really well. So that's certainly the goal. I know you've been talking a lot about consistency and chasing that. Is this a real opportunity to prove that in this in this phase off? Yep, every every test like that. What do you want to see in this match that you didn't see in the last? In last week's game, oh look, it's. Uh, we, we, again, we've come off a, a month's break. We've we've come in together. We've had this is our second full week. We, you, you can see, we're introducing a, a number of guys that I guess didn't play last week coming back into the group. So the, the challenge for us is get our combination work really strong very quickly. But you know the Welsh are going to demand that because they're, they're a passionate team. They they play really effective, high tempo rugby. And if we're not in our game, then then you end up chasing them. So, look, it's a, we, we love playing here and, and, and are really up for what we know is going to be a very physical encounter. And how do you, you know, get that lead from the get-go and then maintain it for Score points. Um, I'm not quite sure the, the gist of the question. Well, the mentality, like, how do you get them in the right mind frame to start off well, which is essentially what you want them to do? Yep. Uh, well, every test is different. You know, every every team goes in the park wanting to start well, and and the key is not just to start well; it's actually to finish well. I mean, you look at last week; we we're up twenty-one-three, and so the, the 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 key is to stay in it, stay focused for extended periods, and, and finish it right through the end of the game. So, something that uh, we've done well in some situations, and, and we haven't done well in others. There's such a long legacy of like success against Wales, and especially last year, it was incredibly convincing. How do you mentally prepare people and make sure that there's no complacency? Well, it's no issue with us because we know how tough it is. So, um, you know, I think you're pretty short, short-minded if all you're doing is focusing on last year. Because if you go back the last 10, 15 years, it's never easy here. And every game's been tight. Even last year, up, up to the 60-minute mark, the arm was a real, was a real arm wrestle that game. So, expecting nothing different. Are you expecting any surprises from Wales? And if so, what would they be? <laughs> well, if I knew what they were, they wouldn't yeah. be surprises. <laughs> but, too, um, but what are you expecting from them in terms of? Oh, I think I've just explained that they're, they're going to be. They, they're, they're a team that know their game. They play high tempo. They're very confident in in what they do uh, and very physical. <coughs> and so. You know, a lot of strong ball carrying, a lot of carry clean type rugby, and and also they quite like the aerial game. So we're seeing a nice mix in that area. And if you go back to Eden Park with the Geordie selection, I think that was forced on you a little bit. The Geordie what, sir? The Geordie selection at 12 yep. at Eden Park with um, a number of injuries in that area. Uh, did that performance, you know, sway your thinking? Because I think uh, you put on maybe Burton as a fullback prior to that. Yep. Um, yeah, well, I said at the time that that certainly swayed our thinking. So it's um, 
we'd always we'd factored him in there. He, he played at 12 the week before when we had the injuries. Um, we, we enjoyed what he did there. We know he's he's really competent at 12, and we've been inserting him at training for right throughout the year into that and having a bit of time in that space. So sometimes the opportunity knocks in different ways, and and the key thing is that he, he went and took it. So. Um, and, and, and this is probably a, a reflection of, of we, we think he deserves a bit of a reward for that performance. Do you still see that 12 jersey as contestable? Because I guess throughout the rugby championship you showed a lot of faith in mm. Dave and Rico Wainey. Oh, I think every jersey is contestable. And so it's... We, we, we stayed at the start. We wanted to build some combos through that rugby championship. I think we did that. We were consistent. Um, and that, and I think that was important for us to get our to get our game, get confidence in what we're doing on the park, and and it's like always happens at test matches, injuries and circumstance open doors for someone else, and and when they take it, it's just a matter of re revisiting your thinking. So I think you've got to be flexible in your thinking. I don't think it, ch it shows a change of direction because I've got, you know, we were delighted with where Davey finished up, and and you'll see him back in that jersey at some point. You welcome back Brad Weber into the squad. What's he shown you to convince you he deserves that spot on the bench? Oh, look, he's played really well. Um, you know, the, the that that nine position was um, a tough selection. We we really felt this was a year we wanted to give Falau to have a good look at him in this camp, um, and and I guess he knocked out a couple of pretty experienced campaigners. So, with his injury, it's opened the door for for Brad. And, and, and also TJ, like TJ will be playing um, in the other team this weekend and Brad with us and um, just carry on doing what he's doing and you know we've given him a couple of little things we wanted to tidy up on but look he's a quality person and we kind of felt well he's here so let's get him in there. In regards to Anton, uh, he made his welcome return last week, um, is it comforting to have someone like him on the bench for a game like this? Yep, it is. He's um, he's come back well, and you know I think his bench time last week will be really good for him. He's been out for a long time, so you know just to get the confidence to go 100% instinctive, that that's what he's really good at. So I guess this is another little step in in, in that return to I guess 100% from a mental side, and um, but delighted with him. He's, he's getting better and better every training. Ian, do you know whether the roof is going to be open or closed? Shut. And you've got a happy with that. Yeah, real happy. It's raining. So, um, I don't know if we were saying that, I don't know whether we did or didn't, but we certainly would have voted for it to be shut, and so we got told yesterday it's going to be shut. So. Yeah, um, in the summer, in the first two tests against the Springboks, I know it's a Wales played a great conservative box kicking to fans first game, and in the third match, they got a long span set. Do you expect the latter this time, especially given that they seem to keep the roof, roof closed? Yeah, I think so. I, I think. Whenever we've played Wales, um, you know, I, I've got a lot of, lot of time. I think the last couple of years they have played a more expensive game. They've played, you know, they, they've, they, you know, I think they're determined to, they've got good wingers, good outside backs, they're determined to bring them into the game. They still like the area of the game and, and it's part of their strategy, but, you know, they're certainly willing, to, they, they certainly test you right across the park, not just in close. So. So the, you know, it, it's always a it's a battle of inches against them. If you don't if you don't do well in that close quarter carry clean type area, then you you open up real opportunities for their backs. And I know they'll be excited to take it. So, you know, we're expecting a, a pretty high tempo game. Yeah, yeah. it always comes into focus. Not obviously, so especially at the start of the autumn, there's referee interpretations. And have you had a chance to speak? Do you, do you get a chance to speak to the, the referee pre-match generally? Uh, no. No, there's new regular well, the, the the new interpretations are really that we just work through Joel Duke with any messages we have and he passes them on to the refs and, and so um, you know, we'll catch them in the shed before the game, but you know, we know Wayne very well. Um, and he's a quality ref. Um, bit of a milestone game for him which we congratulate him for. And but, you know, we he, he's he's quality. Ian, are you uh, I mean it's obviously Talked about a lot here. 69 years since Wales beat the All Blacks. 32 attempts. It was alluded to the success you've had over there. You know, you've dealt with perhaps Gray and Steve. You've spoken <coughs> to them about the history. What What is your take on the history of this fixture? It's always been a, um, a sort of a passionate rivalry, hasn't it? You know, like I think there's been a lot of respect between the the, the, the two countries. There's 
been some massive occasions, haven't they, where, where the game's gone down to the wire and you know, and I, you remember some very, very close games over the years and and I guess the Kiwi connections through the coaches over the last 20 or so years is, um, has probably made that, that rivalry even a little bit more familiar. So it's a, it's a game where we really look forward to playing here. It's a special place with the stadium and and, and the Welsh fans and the you know, I think the Welsh players, they, they, they play for the right reasons and, and again, we're looking forward to that. Just on the history of the team, um, it's the 50th anniversary of a pretty famous moment in the Black history when the Test Murdoch got sent home from uh, playing a test against Wales. Do you have any memories of that or did, was it talked about growing up? Do you, do you have anything to say about that? Obviously, look older than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprised, actually. But, um, uh, no, I, I don't have any memories of it personally, but I certainly have, um, uh, you know, I've been fully aware of the story and, um, and, and the events. It's it's one that, um, I guess, it's part of our, our history. You know, we've always had a tradition to to go down to the to the Angel Pub and, and have a little chat about it as a team and just to talk about, you know, one of our men and what he went through for... For right, there, were, there were rights and wrongs in that situation and some good learning for us about as an all-black team. So, um, you know, he is part of our, our legacy and history and, and one we, this team will be remembering. Ian, you've gone back to uh, Cody at starting hooker. What's the behind that decision this week? Uh, look, it's just um, just managing our, our three hookers more than anything. I think that we had to make a late change last week with Colsey's calf, which put Sonny into the starting lineup, And mm -hmm. so... And uh, Cody was going to have a break then, so he ended up playing. So we just sort of felt, well, we've got two battle-hardened hookers and we'll just switch them around. Yeah. But, um, but again, you know, Cody was probably under a lot of pressure for the, in his last test start, you know. And again, we were delighted with how he went about it and, and played and it was good to see him back. So it's, again, a chance to, for him to cement his role and as, as, you know, one of our leading hookers and, and a lot of confidence in that regard. And you've got all six of your midfielders playing as national rugby this weekend. Is that, that's obviously the benefit of having that all that's got Damon alongside you? Yep, yep, it's part of the plan. And it's, you know, I said after the Japan game, I think it's important for Roger and Braden to get another hit out pretty soon to cement what they what they went through last week. And they would have taken some learnings from that and a chance to play again on, on Friday together and then come back and rejoin us. So, um, yeah, so pleased with that. Uh, Will Jordan's tour is over, is that right? Yep, he's over. So it's, look, we just, he's, he's dealing with a vestibular issue that's not, not, not progressing fast. And so rather than him or us put, having any pressure around his return to play, it's just better to make an early decision and just let him chill out and, and, and come right and, and come back far in next year. Yep, so he lost um, Sam Kane. I played really well up here, and and so yeah, so it's a big opportunity for Dalton, and um, and again, it's disappointing to lose Sam. You know, I think he was, you know, with his um, sort of disrupted year last year, it was, it was good to see him start. I think he's starting to really build through this year, so it's a bit frustrating for him, but um, you know, it opens a door for Dalton and. Uh, you know, everything he's done with us has been quality, and I know he's pretty excited about that. Is there anyone else with the squad at the moment here with the short term niggles or anything like that? Um, in terms of like niggles that would miss a game type stuff, not that I no. Yeah, and I guess last year you were kind of restricted what you could do, where you could go because of COVID. Has it been sort of, kind of more enjoyable trip for the squad this time for you, which is. Relative normality again. Yep, definitely. <laughs> Look, it was. Um, you know, I felt like I feel like I've talked a lot about last year's tour, but it was very unique. It was some very different challenges, uh, particularly at this stage of the tour last year. But um, uh, you know, the, the team certainly enjoying being able to get out and about and back into the old tour mode. Um, you know, you just got to be a little bit careful still with a few things, but. Uh, you know, we're delighted to be able to, to get out and about and experience the different cultures because, let's face it, it's still a pretty special part of touring. And, you know, for some, you know, this, particularly us, and I'm sure it's with other teams, but the All Blacks, we, we enjoy getting out and about and getting to know the, 
the, the I guess the locals and particularly the local golf courses have taken the hammering yesterday. But uh, no, it's been it's been nice. Did you go around? No, 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 no. <laughs> you obviously haven't seen me play golf. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, it's another. Uh, it's another big game on um, this weekend. The Black Ferns are playing their World Cup semi-final. Um, any advice, or uh, what would Wayne Smith be, uh, be telling them? Do you think? Um, I would say that rugby coaches get too much advice anyway from the outside. So I trust Smithy and Chrono, Ted, that, that group, and, and Whitney. They they'll have it under control. And look, I know they're passionate people. They've worked hard for this campaign as, as is that, that as is that team and to see their their growth through this campaign has been pretty special so um, you know we, we just can't wait to see them play and, and to just wish them luck it's um you know to be able to play a semi-final on home, home turf is is pretty cool and um, I know they'll be up for it